What is the religion of the followers of Christ? What was their religion? Christian? Can you prove that? Can you prove to me that they called themselves Christians by inspiration of God? That God inspired them to identify themselves as Christians? No, go to Christianity was there from the beginning. Who called them? Who called them? Who called them Christian? God? Who? The other people. Which people? Well, wait a minute. You say Paul. Paul is God's mouthpiece. So yeah, it would be God if Paul called them, them right? Because you said no, Paul. Well, was Paul talking out of his own, from his own desire, or was he talking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit? So if an apostle tells you, call yourself Christian, that's God telling the apostle to tell you. If you believe in the New Testament is inspired, and you believe the apostles were inspired to give us the revelation that God wanted the churches to have, so Paul tells you, hey, you're a Christian, that's not Paul telling you, that's God telling you through Paul. Because Christ is speaking through Paul. So some of you said people, one of you said Paul. If it's Paul, then it's God. So do you believe that God is the one who said, this is your label. This is what I want you to call yourself. A Christian, because a Christian is a follower of Christ. So if you're a follower of Christ, you're a Christian. Do you believe God gave us that label? Or men did? Men, I think men, did. men not, not God? Not so wait, so was it by expression? Yes. Okay, so now you're confusing me. If you believe by inspiration, then it's not men, it's God. Make up your mind. No. Did men who are not inspired, did men who are not inspired first call the followers of Christ Christian, or did God give them that label? No. The man, the man called. Show me where man gave them that label, not God. You won't find it, it's not there. Yes. You won't find it, it's not there. It's not in the Bible. In, what you're referring to is Acts 11.26, where it says that the believers were first called Christian at Antioch. Show me where it says uninspired men first called them that. The verse doesn't say that. Go to Acts 11.26 and see, because this is a common misunderstanding among Christians, that the believers, the followers of Christ, were called Christians by their opponents by way of mockery, of mocking them. I've heard sermons preached on that. I want everyone to turn to Acts 11.26. Acts 11.26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So he was... This is Barnabas found Paul. Let me give you the context. Barnabas found Paul, and he took Paul with him to Antioch, Syria. So now when they're there, what happens? So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were... We're first called Christians in Antioch. By whom? Where does it say by inspired people, by their enemies, by way of mockery? Where does it say in the verse? It tells you they were first called Christians. That's it. By who? And I'm going to show you by God. But first, I want to erase that, that tradition. Because I, when I was growing up, I've heard pastors who met well, saying, yeah, we were first called Christians, believers were first called Christians by the pagans by way of mocking them. And I bought into it. But then I read the verse, where? Where does it say the pagans called them this? And where does it say they were given that label by way of mockery? Where does it say that? It doesn't. I'm now going to demonstrate to you they were called Christians by divine revelation. How do I know by divine revelation? Number one, it's even implicit in your passage. Because notice who's there in Antioch. Paul and Barnabas. Now do you believe Paul and Barnabas were receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit? Beyond that, if you read 27, 29, it says there were prophets there and a prophet named Agabus who prophesied by the Spirit. Right? 27, 29, right? So even in that context, in that context, the author is telling you that this is a time where people are receiving revelation from God, the apostles and prophets. So contextually, you can say that this is what's called a divine passage. They were called Christians by God who is revealing new information, revelation, through the apostles and prophets who are alive and present at the church at the time, right? But that's implicit. Let me make it explicit. Explicit reference from an inspired author saying, God wants you to bear the name Christian with, with honor. An inspired author. Go to 1 Peter 4. Let's read verse 14. Chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, I hope you're learning. 
that you were given the title Christian by the true God himself. One of the objections, the Muslims raise say, look, in this, the Quran, it tells us to call ourselves Muslims. Allah says you are Muslims in this book of ours. Your book, nowhere does God say, call yourself a Christian. And then I tell my Muslim friend, are you sure you read my book? Let me show you where God says, call yourself a Christian. First read, First Peter 4, 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Now let me explain what he means, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The Holy Spirit of God that you've been given is the one who will eventually glorify you. So this spirit of God is given to you as a seal and guarantee of your glorification. Know that if you have the spirit of God, know you will be glorified. That's what it means, the spirit of glory. The spirit who will bring you into the glorious presence of Christ to bask in his glory, to share in his glory. So rejoice if you suffer because you bear the name of Christ. Because that means God's spirit has destined you for glory. That's what it's saying. Rejoice when people attack you, insult you, belittle you, beat you, imprison you, and even kill you because you bear the name of Christ. Because that's God's way of telling you your destiny is glory. Endure. Because I have glory waiting for you. In the presence of my son, before his feet you shall be day and night enjoying him. But it doesn't say Christian there though. In 1 Peter 4.14, right? But so the question is, what does it mean to bear the name of Christ? Verse 16 tells you. 1 Peter 4.16. There you're told what it means to bear the name of Christ. Verse 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian. As a Muslim? As a Jew? As a follower of the way? Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian... Go ahead. Let him, not, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Now, those who are not Christians do not believe in the inspiration of the New Testament. That's a given. But you're Christians. You believe that Peter is inspired, right? You believe all the books inspired by the Spirit. So when Peter said that if you suffer because you are named Christian, who told Peter to say those words? So what more proof do you need that the label Christian was given to you by the triune God by inspiration. What more evidence do you need? Right? 